It's the end of the day with Ray. Hello, my friends. Well, here I am with Jeff Leader, the CEO of Dot Security, and Dot Security is Impact Networking's IT cybersecurity company. I was here with Jeff about a year ago, well, it was about eight months ago when they were getting ready to have their grand opening for Dot Security. It's been a while. I wanted to check back with them and see how things are going. Jeff, it's great to be able to talk to you again. How's it going, man? Good. Great to talk to you again as well. You know, we had that open house. When was that? Like in August? July, uh, maybe? March, I believe. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Jeez, the time just flies by. <laughs> so now it's been long enough that you're actually putting people in the system. You guys are gaining some customers. I want to talk a little bit about that. But, you know, since, since you started, you had the grand opening. That was the big party. Then you all had to get back to work. You got to build this thing out. And, you know, a lot of people are talking about how hard it is, you know, to hire, especially high level engineers around cybersecurity. So I want to just ask you to start out with that question right there. How are you doing that? So um, we've got a couple of tricks up our sleeves there. Um, we're certainly sourcing a lot of talent from uh, Impact USO, the service desk team. Uh, we've got a lot of young professionals who have high level of aptitude or learning stuff quick. We're putting them through the paces and we're bringing them on board over here in the SOC. Uh, we're also finding, and even in some cases, moving people out to operate out of the facility here. We believe heavily in having people work under one roof. We operate really well when we do that. So um, we've got tons of candidates, especially on the red team, but I mean, even in the SOC, awesome talent that's joining the team and we're growing like a weed. Well, most of the people that have been keeping up with the episodes I've done around Impact.Security have seen the facility. It's an amazing facility in its own right. When you bring people in and they see that, you know, what, what are, what's the response they get? Because a lot of them are probably coming from other cybersecurity atmospheres. But what's the response? Yeah, there's, uh, there, there's no facility quite like this. People are awed. Um, always impressed. We always get really positive feedback. I mean, this, this place was custom built to support our operations. Uh, we do some incredible things here. Of course, we've got some restricted areas that we don't allow everybody into. Um, but the things that we are capable of here and the way that we're able to show that off here is very unique to us and it is incredible. Let's talk about the uh, staff right now from a number perspective. How many people are in the seats at the SOC Center itself? So total occupancy currently in the facility is approximately 50 or so, okay. uh, 50 to 60 I'd say. Um, we have new personnel joining the team on a monthly, if not near weekly basis at this point. And since March had the grand opening, how many customers have we brought in as new customers? So I'd say uh, maybe three to five per month, somewhere in that okay. ballpark. So um, we're certainly, you know, working to balance the new clients mm -hmm. and the new team members uh, and ensuring that we're providing the best possible service along the way. Well, you want to do that. And I know you guys move upstream you know, as far as your IT services go, and I'm sure you're doing the same thing with the cybersecurity deliverable itself. I mean, is there is there any customers that, that you don't see you helping with cybersecurity? No, I, I'd, I'd say we built this service so that we could bring value to any client organization. Uh, from the start, we knew that the enterprise space was flooded with different services and mm -hmm. products. That's certainly an area where we find those strategic partnerships, but we also seek to provide value to the small to mid-sized enterprise space as well, because traditionally those are areas that are dramatically underserved when it comes to cybersecurity and compliance. Do you, is there any particular vertical that's been more successful than others? So we have compliance specializations in both healthcare and manufacturing. So those are key areas that we try to focus in on, but generally speaking, every organization needs help with cybersecurity and risk management. Well, I know you guys do a lot with ERPs and one of the, the biggest vertical for that is the manufacturing vertical. Are you seeing the existing base coming on as customers or if you looked at the ones you've added to the portfolio, are those net new customers? Little column A, little column B. Um, we've, we've certainly seen clients that they have the IT security already uh, through managed IT services. They have the ERP or, or other services on the impact end, and they see the value in cybersecurity and risk management and compliance services. Um, we have some clients that, you know, that's the start. They want that pen test. They want that cybersecurity services. They know they need a SOC watching their backs. Uh, and we've actually worked the other way where we've had started with cybersecurity and then implemented the managed IT services after the fact, I can tell you uh, we certainly enjoy those clients where we have a combination of services because mm -hmm. we can provide some tremendous value under those circumstances. Well, you know, a lot of times the cybersecurity 
vendor, if you will, it's not necessarily the same as the IT services vendors, and that's with your own customers or with any other IT services company. Are you finding yourselves providing cybersecurity services for competitive IT companies? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, we, we're built out to provide services to client organizations regardless of who's providing the IT service to them. Um, that actually simplifies things from an operational standpoint. Mm -hmm. As far as we care, Whoever's managing that IT, we're providing and watching their backs and providing the value to them and the client organization. But again, as mentioned, we always like to be able to work very efficiently and candidly with uh, our port partner organization at Impact as much mm -hmm. as possible as well. Yeah, I would say, I mean, there's a quite a base of customers that you can pull from to begin with. Sure, that helps. You know, I think a lot of times, I'd be more concerned with the maturity level of the IT services company that's trying to, you know, maybe pass off the cybersecurity business to you guys and you have to deal with an inefficient or immaturely run IT company. Yeah, that's a, actually a really good point. One of the things that we've seen in the past is, you know, with hiring, we touched on that earlier, education is really important. Um, we've got plenty of people who really want to join the team, but don't necessarily have the skill set or have the knowledge to, to do that. Um, we really make certification and training and onboarding new people and getting them ramped up a very high level of focus for the organization. We do the same for partner organizations and client organizations. So um, there's IT service providers, I'm sure out there who don't really understand the distinction between IT security and cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. That's really, really important because we don't want to step on anyone's toes. We built the service out not to reinvent the wheel and not to provide IT security. We provide cybersecurity compliance and risk management. We're really good at doing that, and we can do that very cooperatively with people who really know what they're doing on the IT security side. When you talk about compliance around uh, healthcare, if you will. Sure. So you have experts in-house that could go out and make sure that they're achieving what they need to achieve to be compliant. Do you do that as a separate service so they can hire you to do that and maybe they don't do any cybersecurity with you or they don't do any IT security with you? So we have a handful of clients who have pure play compliance as a service components without, I, I won't say without any of the cybersecurity components, mm -hmm. but without a large portion of the cybersecurity components that we leverage to provide that side of the service. Um, even still, that's one of those areas where if a client has a lot of capabilities, a lot of tech, a lot of personnel to provide mm -hmm. those cybersecurity services, great, that's fantastic. We can still advise them on you know, best practices, policies and procedures, how to manage and maintain the data, gap analysis, that type of thing on the compliance side. But the compliance services harmonize really well with the cybersecurity services that we provide because we know what the client is getting and how well they're covered under those circumstances. Well, it seems like a lot, maybe in the enterprise space, you might see it more the, the, the higher end of the SMB where they're probably doing everything supposedly right, or at least in their own mind, they might have in-house doing it, like a large law firm or something. But do, do you see a play where you can kind of police the police, if you will, so they bring you in just to make sure whatever they're doing is right? Is that something that, that you sell as a service or do clients even want that? Absolutely. So um, traditionally, we like to start every engagement with some form of assessment. Mm -hmm. So we do our pen test, uh, also known as a risk audit. That's how mm -hmm. we brand it internally. Uh, we go above what a traditional pen test might include, and we really focus on the business aspect and provide value in terms of not just saying, here's what we exploited, but talking about it from a business perspective and saying, here's how that is a threat to your business operations and what you should do and what we feel you should prioritize in terms of all of the different risks that we've identified through the risk audit process. So we like to perform that risk audit for client organizations who have our services or any others where we know there's always gaps. We know there's always room for improvement. We can help highlight and point out those things. And especially when clients think they're covered and they've got security in the bag, that's usually the areas where that can really highlight some very important things for them to address. Mm -hmm which they need to be addressed, obviously. Oh, yeah. So, you know, I think the biggest piece, or not the biggest piece, but a, but an extremely important part of cybersecurity is training. Training the end users, the organizations, your service and support. And talk to me a little bit about that. Do you guys provide an in-depth training for these companies? And is it a continuous training? Yeah, absolutely. I, I like to believe that 
you know, through every interaction, especially virtual chief information security officer talking to client organizations mm -hmm. and advising them, or a virtual compliance manager talking about a specific form of regulatory compliance, we're doing everything we can to ensure that they understand what that advice is, what informs it. Um, you know, there's, there's a balance there. We don't want to drown anybody with, with information that they're not ready to accept, but we want to make sure that every client is comfortable with the services we're providing and asking questions and is informed. Uh, training is absolutely essential and key. We also offer security awareness training services where we will advise client organizations on how to better test or evaluate their users' um, proficiency at identifying things like phishing emails mm -hmm. and also provide training modules and that type of thing to end users to ensure that they are thinking before they're clicking. And you could provide them like protocols or best practices if you will. And is that a separate service in its own right that you deliver? Yeah, so that's, uh, we use specific technology and then provide services on top of that to advise client organizations on what new challenges organizations are facing. I mean, attackers change up their tactics all the time. Right now we're seeing a massive uptick in attackers behaving in ways to exploit people who are doing holiday shopping or that mm -hmm. type of thing. Um, attackers are always going to leverage any sort of hot topic or newsworthy sort of um, subject in order to try and exploit people and get them to click and do things they really shouldn't. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, it seems to be so easy. When you see some of these emails come in, it's just like it drives me crazy. And you don't, you're, everybody's getting to be afraid to open up emails at a point in time. But, so we still have to run the business, but you're trying to mitigate the risk. And education is a good way to do that. Yep. You know, absolutely. There's absolutely no doubt about that. So in 2022 and 2020 and 2019, the last few years, we've seen so many crazy, you know, hacks that are showing up in the news or the media and, you know, losses of hundreds of millions of dollars for corporations. and. You know, what do you see in, in 2023 that's probably the biggest threat on the horizon? Well, it seems like uh, one of the largest looming threats uh, and one that just keeps increasing is ransomware. Mm -hmm. um, ransomware is really one of those things that brings businesses to their knees mm -hmm. and oftentimes can lead to them closing their doors mm -hmm. eventually. So um, something like a all out loss of productivity and data for an extended period of time resulting in extensive cleanup efforts, it just has such a cataclysmic effect mm -hmm. on client organizations. So, um, you know, we, we pride ourselves in providing a really effective detection and response services where the SOC is catching the attacker when they enter the environment or shortly thereafter so we can contain and eradicate that threat before it turns into an all out ransomware attack. And that is really the most progressive way that any organization can approach that mm -hmm. imminent threat because it's not going away it's getting better, I'm sorry, bigger and worse constantly. Mm -hmm. Sure, well, I think we have to assume there's a breach almost. I mean, a breach could happen and nothing happens to the company for six or eight months or a year while they go and mine all whatever they're gonna do. So if you have an attitude that, hey, we are breached and what's our backup and who's behind us to help us get through that, it's kind yeah. of interesting. Well, it's, you know, cybersecurity obviously is the buzzword that everybody's using. Um, we see a lot of players in the marketplace and. You know, I can pick on some, you know, maybe some low operational maturity level, a Paul Dipple term, IT providers that are out there calling themselves cybersecurity experts, if you will. And it's, you know, what, what can you share with, you know, the, the, the customers out there in the marketplace? What, what's a sign that you're probably not with the right cybersecurity firm, if you will? Sure. So um, it's tricky because if it's the service provider, oftentimes they're going to give you you know, the answers to, to satisfy you, right? Um, things to really look out for is, um, you know, detection and response capabilities are sort of integral to SOC services. Um, does the provider have a dedicated SOC facility? Do they have actual cybersecurity analysts who are providing 24 seven detection response services on top of tools or is it just really fancy antivirus? Um, are they providing things like risk management and advisory services? Are they tracking your maturity in any way, shape, or form? Um, if you ask those questions and you know you really dig and you find that they're they're checking some of the boxes, but that's it. You know they're keeping the lights on. They're not actually providing full-fledged risk management and detection response services. I mean that's that's the biggest sign, right? Um, and there are there are certainly really easy ways for any organization to determine how effective their services, the current services they're receiving are, and that's 
having a pen test or a gap analysis or something like a risk audit performed because that'll highlight pretty immediately what you do or don't have in terms of coverage. Well, you know, ransomware, obviously, we just talked about that a little while ago, but why don't you clear the myth? Because I think a lot of people are still thinking that's only for enterprise accounts. Why do they want to do anything with me? I'm a small, you know, regional plumbing outfit. You know, why, why am I a threat? Sure. It's a good question. That, that, that's an objection that comes up quite often. But if you think about it, every modern organization has access to the internet, has data. If you value the data, an attacker values the data, especially stuff like personal information or private information, attackers will get access to that, they will monetize it, they will sell it. Um, and ransomware is so profitable because when they shut a business down, they lock that data up and they shut down the operations, that business is typically forced to pay out. Oftentimes attackers will even do their research in advance and know what, for example, cyber insurance premium looks like and mm -hmm. what a payout might look like and actually ask for that in the form of a ransom. Um, and they're really sophisticated and tricky and they cover their tracks and they're hard to pick up. If you don't have the right services watching for this stuff, as an organization, you don't stand a chance and it's coming because attackers will monetize it. And frankly, there's such a huge ecosystem built up around ransomware. You have ransomware as a service, phishing as a service providers. It's almost crazy. It's a multi-billion dollar industry <laughs> it, of crooks. It, it really is. <laughs> yeah. Some of these things have uh, support in HR departments. Yeah. So Help desk, right. you know, get the Bitcoin over to them. Yeah, it's kind yep. of nuts when you think about it. Yep. Totally crazy. Well, you know, I, I, give us some insight of where you think you're going to be in 2025 with all of this. I'm sure Frank's asked you that a couple of times. But sure. What, what do you think? Uh, so we have some pretty massive plans on the horizon. You know, Impact, of course, um, is, is partner number one, um, mm -hmm. but we are seeking additional partners uh, in the IT security space who understand the value of cybersecurity mm -hmm. services and would be able to uh, incorporate our offerings on top of theirs uh, to go to market in different regions. Um, VCSO and some of the SOC offerings that we have, those services, we're enhancing and expanding upon those. Um, and we're, we're definitely looking into um, some improved vendor risk management capabilities, uh, some additional forensics capabilities, mm -hmm. along with a number of other integrations and technologies that are on the horizon and we know can provide some additional value to client organizations. Yeah, that partner program, you know, that was a big thing for me. I'm excited about that. I can't wait for you all to really get that knocked off the ground because there is a need for it. You built a phenomenal facility here and it's not just about the brick and mortar, it's about the people in it and, and you know, the disciplines that you all have as a company. And, it's kind of exciting stuff. Absolutely. So, so when you started all of this with Frank, you know, a couple of years ago, probably when you really got it going, mm -hmm. but you know, has it, have you hit your expectations or have you just blown them out of the water? I'd say we've blown them out of the water. Um, we, we knew we had something fantastic uh, that we were building here, but uh, I'd say we've exceeded our expectations so far and all signs point to this thing just continuing to grow exponentially. Which, so you gotta have a challenge, What's the biggest challenge in 2023 for Dot? I would love to triple our user base and more than triple our client base. Um, you know, I, we've got a nice big SOC facility here. I'd love to fill that sooner mm -hmm. than later. Uh, we, we've got discussions already about opening up an additional site mm -hmm. um, and just really expanding um, our client base and our team uh, and really providing more value uh, and diversifying the, the capabilities that we have. Um, one of the most amazing things that we've observed so far is the more we expand our visibility, mm -hmm. the more we learn, the more value we provide to all of our clients for things like threat hunting. Because when we pick up on attacker behavior in site one mm -hmm. and we develop logic to detect that in sites you know, one through one million, we're really able to pick up on some attacker behavior at a very large scale and begin sharing that intelligence with appropriate resources and parties and using that to improve our service continuously. That's pretty cool. Do cyber insurance companies reach out to you, folks like you? I mean, do you have partnerships with any of them? So, yes. Um, long story short, yes. It's, it's an interesting relationship between cyber insurance providers and, and cybersecurity service providers, right? Um, you know, cyber insurance providers, they, there's room for that. Every, every organization should have a policy. Mm -hmm. uh, 
a policy that they very closely inspect and make sure that they're adhering to all of the requirements. So as a service provider, that's great because that aligns with what we oftentimes recommend to organizations that mm -hmm. they implement in terms of multi-factor authentication and, and just hardening and backups, you name it, right? Um, interestingly though, you know, our, our goal sort of aligns as well with cyber insurance providers in terms of we don't ever want our clients to have to pick up the, the phone and call uh, their cyber insurance provider to report an incident and bring in a forensics team. So if we're successful, the cyber insurance providers are not actually as engaged with the client and the client ultimately benefits because they don't have to make that call. Yeah, which is the end goal for all of us. Absolutely. <laughs> well, I can't wait to come back and do a checkup on you. So I, I think that, uh, but real quick though, how many seats can you, can you put out there? I mean, you got? Yeah, we've got about a hundred total in okay. this facility. Yeah. hundred total, that's awesome. Well, I'll look forward to seeing all those full and I'm sure you guys will get there. Oh yeah. Because uh, impact and dot security doesn't do anything <laughs> except exceptionally well, right? That's, that's right. That. Because Jeff, everybody watching us knows this, status quo is the killer of all that'll be invented. Thanks my friends. <laughs>